Good afternoon, friends. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how almost every steroid I ever tried affected my mood or my disposition. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already, like the video and comment on the video to help with the channel's growth. Now let's get started. First of all, I want to tell you some preliminary information. I don't know much about how steroids affect hair loss. The reason why is despite my appearance, I'm actually not that prone to hair loss. So I can't tell with as much detail how different steroids affected my hair loss and the state of my hair at the time. For this reason, I often ask Derek about these questions. I also am not that prone to developing pimples or acne. And for that reason, I often ask Steve about his experiences with acne on various steroids. What I am very prone to though, is a vulnerability in my mood and my disposition. I'm prone to depression, anxiety, irritability, having a bad temper, developing low libido. Almost everything in my behavior seems to be vulnerable to all kinds of things, including drugs. So I'm very sensitive to their effects on my brain. Moreover, I also tried almost all of these steroids somewhat experimentally. I never thought when I tried steroids that I would be an elite athlete. I had already, the first time I tried steroids, I was already a professional in investments. The second time I tried steroids, I was mostly doing it for fun and working not that actively as a consultant at the time. So both of the times I tried steroids, I didn't have any allusions to the potential of me becoming some professional athlete. I wanted to be maybe a professional arm wrestler for fun, but I wasn't maximizing everything. Instead, a lot of the reason I tried steroids in the end was because I had read about them since I was 15 and I was so curious about how they would make me feel and how they could change my body. So I didn't use them for very long periods, but I was very aware and observant, especially about my subjective reactions to them, both times. And because I used them about five years apart in my 20s, I noticed how my experiences changed from both times. For these two reasons, I think that I am somewhat of a useful person to learn about our psychological reactions to steroids because I was observant and I'm sensitive to them. Although with that said, we all have very much different cognitive architectures. That's what I call the differences in our brains through development or through genetics that impact how certain things affect us. We all think somewhat differently. So I assume that most of you will be less sensitive to these steroids than I was, and some of you will have slightly different reactions. I don't think anyone will have a worse reaction to me, more, you know, at least not often, but maybe some of you will be, for example, resistant to the irritability that comes from more androgenic signaling, and some of you will be more sensitive, for example, to the progestogenic signaling from the progesterone receptor. I also want to mention that in this video, to make the video easier to watch and listen to, I'm not going to talk about my hypothesized thoughts about how the mechanisms are behind what I'm feeling. Specifically, we don't know which signals are responsible for how these steroids affect our psychology. We have some limited understanding, limited assays of receptor affinity and efficacy in usually not human receptors, but these, this information is very limited. There are reasons I have developed my own hypotheses for the various steroids I'm about to mention. Maybe in a future video, I could talk about what I think is going on, which uh, biological systems are at play. There are much more than the androgen, estrogen, progesterone receptors. There are many more things at play, some direct agonism of receptors you wouldn't imagine, like the PPARs that cardinine is involved in, or for example, direct agonism of glucocorticoid receptors, or um, effects on, for example, acetylcholesterol in the brain. There are so many widespread effects that we know about already, almost for sure, and there's a lot that we don't know. So I have hypotheses. I could discuss these in a future video. In this video, I'm just going to talk about how these steroids made me feel in subjective terms. First, we have to talk about testosterone. I'll talk about testosterone in two contexts here. One is the acute effects. The acute effects can only be known with a testosterone that's not attached to an ester, something that's free so that it can be fully metabolized immediately. So I'm going to talk about a low dose of testosterone suspension, also called sometimes testosterone no ester if it's in an oil, or high doses. So at a low dose of between 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams of testosterone, without controlling estradiol, I'm not using an aromatase inhibitor or a serum. What I'll feel is basically the, a mixture of, oh, I shouldn't say what they are, but what I'll feel is confidence, energy, a slight amount of euphoria, 
Potentially a slightly higher sex drive, but I probably won't notice it. Resilience, a feeling of resilience, an ability to assert oneself. This will mostly be positive. I don't know if I mentioned energy. This will mostly be positive. If I raise the dose from 50 to 100 milligrams to say 200 to 300 milligrams, the effect on sex drive will be negligible for sure. I won't notice that. Instead of being just more confident, I'll be confident, but also the confidence and sort of uh, aggressiveness will turn irritable. So at 200 to 300 milligrams, it feels more irritable. Sometimes I've gone into arguments with people for no reason, not violent arguments, because at the time I was trying to be non-violent actually, but not violent arguments, but I've gone into arguments that shouldn't have been arguments because I was so irritable and frustrated with a small thing and wouldn't leave it alone when I was on a high dose of testosterone suspension just before going to the gym. Like just experimentally, I would try 200 or 250 or 300 milligrams. It's interesting. Maybe I should talk about systems briefly here. What's going on is we're observing some of the effects that are more stimulatory, we think androgenic, but also some of the balancing effects of estrogenic signaling here, because we're not using an aromatase inhibitor. So at the lower doses, more of a balanced effect happens. At the higher doses, it's it, you feel more of the androgen effect and less of the estrogen good mood, mood stabilizing, sort of serotonergic warmth. You feel less of that. So you're more irritable and more unbridled. Anyway, so that's the feeling there. Now, if testosterone is used with a longer ester, it changes a little bit. With a longer ester, it really depends how you're controlling estradiol. So for me, if I'm not controlling estradiol at all, up to at least the doses of two grams maybe, do not make me irritable at all. In fact, at lower doses, they produce similar effects to the lower doses of testosterone suspension. Slight euphoria, more energy, more resilience, more ability to feel pleasure actually, just really positive effects. And the kind of aggression is positive at lower doses. At higher doses, without using an aromatase inhibitor, like two grams of testosterone, the feeling almost becomes superhuman. There's much more ability to feel pleasure. The sex drive is much higher in my experience personally. Although I should mention that in most people, once estradiol goes above, 100 for example in the US metric it lowers sex drive slowly and produces erectile dysfunction slowly on the other side when estradiol is too low it suddenly totally halts sex drive and harms erectile function so just thought you know about estradiol but for me if I don't control estradiol I feel almost like superhuman feelings of resilience at two grams a day I also me become a bit boisterous gregarious oh by the way testosterone also makes me social the feeling of testosterone without the aromatase inhibition so it's different when it gets higher and higher the sex drive goes almost like superhuman the resilience is almost superhuman the confidence is almost superhuman and there's for me no irritability i don't get into arguments with people or anything like that now this by the way explains some of the personalities you have seen in sports some of those people are using high amounts of androgens or they respond in this way even with lower estradiol so anyway, the point is that some of these people are taking androgens and develop this overly confident alpha male personality. That's what happens to most people if they take two grams or so or a gram and a half of testosterone. It's an incredible antidepressant. But in my case, if I use an aromatase inhibitor and keep estradiol lower, at some point as I raise testosterone with a longer ester like enanthe, maybe above a gram a day, it starts to make me slightly more irritable. My disposition changes slightly. I'm quicker to get into arguments and so on. By the way, I didn't talk about having very low estradiol. That, I should mention about how estradiol feels. It's a steroid anyway. Higher estradiol feelings, what you feel is a kind of warmth and comfort, a kind of peacefulness. It is an antidepressant kind of feeling, but it's weird. You actually, even me, and I'm somebody who probably never cried in my adulthood except like a couple of times while praying. But if my estradiol levels go high enough or, or while drunk, maybe I cried a couple of times while drunk, I don't know. But if my estradiol levels go high enough, I'll be likely to be watching some kind of chick flick kind of thing with Lucy and or some kind of romantic movie. And in the middle of the movie, when the sad part happens, I'll find myself tearing and enjoying it, interestingly, enjoying it, like watching it very <laughs> emotionally connected to the movie or whatever it is and crying, but not feeling bad, feeling a good kind of cry, which by the way, finally helped me understand why women love to cry. For, for when you're on, when you have high estradiol levels and you cry, it feels great. You feel relieved, you feel in touch with yourself. It totally washes away the thoughts that you had. So estradiol, is, it's a good feeling, the high amount. Uh, low amounts of estradiol feel like apathy. You'll lose, uh, sometimes when people describe how they feel on SSRIs, that's actually how I feel on low estradiol. You might feel 
like you can't get in touch with your feelings but you also unlike those guys who have issues with SSRIs you won't feel like you care so you'll lose your ability to get in touch with feelings when estradiol goes below say 15 or 20 in the US scale at some point it de depends on the person at some point suddenly this will happen you'll just lose interest in emotional things you'll start caring less about others you'll have a bit of if you are prone to anxiety you'll start having anxiety even panic attacks and you'll also sleep worse you'll be slightly more neurotic all the time and so those are the opposite ends of the estradiol or estrogen the main estrogen now that we've talked about testosterone let's move on to the man-made steroids let's talk about the ones that I consider having some kind of positive psychological impact or impact on my disposition or mood beginning with trenbolone surprisingly if I use a very low amount of trenbolone, it has to be an acetate, that's the short acting one. If it's 25 milligrams to say 50 milligrams and only used maybe twice a week so it doesn't build up, it actually provides a very slight mood boost. It feels a little, I feel a little bit, I guess it's a dopamine, well, I'm not going to get into my theories of what it is, but it feels like I want to do new things, maybe go out tonight, uh, do something unpredictable. I feel comfortable still, not unconfident or anything like that. So at the very low doses or when I first start using Trenbolone, there's a slight uplifting part of the mood, but that quickly turns south if I either increase the frequency of dosing or just continue using it for a few days. But I thought I'd mention that to be comprehensive. The second is Anavar. Anavar doesn't actually make me feel better, but it has at a very low dose, it has some slight increase of energy. It gives me a slightly energetic feeling and maybe a little bit more drive or resilience. Maybe for me, this is at like 25 milligrams taken orally or depending on the quality of the substance, maybe 50 milligrams. But if I go slightly higher on that, it immediately flips and I get essentially a weaker version of the feelings that one would feel with too much testosterone without estrogen or too much testosterone suspension, which is irritability, frustration, uh, just mainly frustration. For me, it doesn't affect my temper too much. It just makes me slightly more uh, able to get frustrated. That's the feeling I get with too much anivore. And there are two man-made steroids that really have a positive effect, I would say. One is proviron. Between 25 to 75 milligrams of proviron, it gives me a bit more energy improves my mood disposition from being a glass half empty to a glass half full slightly and increases my sex drive very slightly this effect completely abates if i take it days in a row maybe if i take it for a week and a half in a row it goes completely away but if i use it once a week it still has that effect so it's a little bit useful for motivation maybe for work taken once a week or maximum twice a week or for acute sex drive very weakly so though much less than other drugs and the final drug that affects my psychology positively really affects it positively and this drug doesn't really the effect doesn't seem to go away and it doesn't seem to go away at higher doses although I've never used more than 100 milligrams that is Dianabol for me and I think this may be a little bit unique to me because my brain may be a little bit more estrogenic because of having high aromatase expression for a long time but something about Dianabol feels great to me for me Dianabol is almost like an antidepressant uh, at even 10 milligrams I feel slightly more uplifted light uh, I feel like I want to do something fun with my day. I feel in a positive disposition. I feel social. I have a bit more aggression and resilience, but in a positive way. It's a very, very good feeling for me. For me, uh, Danabal could easily be called an antidepressant. I don't know if this is true for all people. Not everybody notices it as much, but I've never noticed anyone have a bad effect from Danabal. And many people do get this effect, but they're not completely observant about it. Next, let's talk about the drugs that I call eh. I can't really discern a noticeable effect from these two drugs, which could be a good thing if you think about it. The first drug I haven't experimented with as much because it wasn't really as popular or as available when I used to use steroids, although I did try it quite a bit during the four months that I started weightlifting again last year. This drug is called DHB. It's a 5-alpha reduced version of Equipoise. This drug has almost no discernible effect on my psychology at up to 100 milligrams during one day. I haven't ever taken it days in a row and I've never used more than uh, 100 milligrams at one time. But DHB had no psychological effect on me or anybody else I know. 
It doesn't make me irritable. It may have a slight positive effect on resilience or a slight effect on mood. Maybe it slightly also raises systemic inflammation levels uh, because of potentially various pathways. So maybe it causes a bit of brain fog, but really no harmful effects on my psychology. The same is certainly true for Anadrol. For me, Anadrol does not cause any effects on my psychology. It's interesting that I heard from a Nasser Assombati interview that he said he was invulnerable to Anadrol. I also seem to have the same experience. It's never, well, except for the hunger issues, obviously it causes me hunger issues, but psychologically at the very least, Anadrol doesn't bother me at all. It's a perfectly acceptable, actually, I'm not invulnerable to it. I get acid reflux, I get, there's a lot of things actually, now that I come to think of it, but not the psychological effects. I'm completely invulnerable to the maybe mild psychological effects that come from it. But for me, basically Anadrol is as if I didn't take anything. I could be a perfectly good PhD student taking Anadrol daily, probably if I didn't actually work out. But if I worked out, I would end up with inflammation across my body and probably some brain fog. Now, let's talk about the steroids that affected me poorly. First, let's talk about Deca or Nandrolone. Deca and Nandrolone didn't worsen my mood too much. They were somewhat similar to DHB and Anadrol in having like less of an effect on my mood acutely if I did not take testosterone. When I didn't take testosterone, I couldn't really notice an effect from DECA or NPP acutely. Maybe they slightly increased my anxiety levels and neuroticism, slightly, while also displacing obviously other hormones. But it wasn't a problem for me, okay? And I've tried like 100 milligrams of NPP every other day. That was never a problem for me. But when I had higher testosterone levels, probably because of higher estrogen levels, estrogen accentuates the synthesis of prolactin, by the way, so does progesterone. We shouldn't get into the mechanisms here, but the point is that when I had higher testosterone and maybe estrogen levels, DECA and NPP started to cause me anxiety, more neuroticism, and serious sex drive issues like completely inhibiting my sex drive, completely, to the point where I never wanted to take DECA again. DECA is long acting, so it's really annoying in this sense. NPP is quite valuable and less harsh in other ways, but this effect for me was unpleasant. So for me, these are things that did affect my psychology poorly and really weren't worth really balancing because I wasn't so concerned about my hair. So really, these are things that were no goes for me. The next was equipoise. In my early 20s, unlike DECA and Nandrolone, which affected me also in my early 20s, even more so because I was taking more testosterone. But unlike those, equipoise did not affect my psychology in my early 20s, and I knew that some people got anxiety from it. I paid attention. I never felt anything bad from equipoise in my early 20s. But by the time I reached my late 20s, I went through a lot of different life circumstances, and I guess I developed some damage in my body, some epigenetic change. When I used equipoise in my late 20s, I developed a feeling of everything being not quite all right, a feeling that things may go wrong at any moment. That is low inhibitory signaling. Somehow equipoise in lowered, I shouldn't get into mechanisms again, but somehow equipoise gave me a mild sense of anxiety all the time that I was on it. It was very mild, very tolerable, even for me, but unpleasant, and I didn't want to take it. Finally, let me tell you about the worst steroid that I've ever taken for my psychology. Like almost everybody else, it was Trenbolone. Although I should mention, I've tried, I've never tried Methyltren, and I've never tried Tren Suspension, because at this point I don't want to harm my body, and those may be so harmful just taking once. And I, I didn't mention Superdrol, because it didn't have much of an impact on my psychology. But back to Tren. So I haven't tried those two, but I've tried Tren Acetate, Enanthate, and the, the real ones, the Finaject ones, other ones. I've also tried Tren Hex, the 76.5 milligram ones from the Middle East. I've tried Tren at up to 300 milligrams a day for very short periods just to know what the psychological effects were. For me, at a very low dose, as I said before, before it accumulates in my system, it's actually slightly euphoric, gives me more energy. I wouldn't notice it, but it makes me feel slightly better. Quickly, that changes. What happens is essentially a combination of two psychological states that I never experienced in the same time. One is doubting myself, low self-esteem, low confidence, view of the world as being shifting, unpredictable, honestly, slight paranoia, doubting people, over time especially. I was once on trend for six months when I was younger. If you're on trend for six months, eventually most people develop this kind of paranoia. You start to specifically think that whoever you're dating is cheating on you and you're sure of it, and you're sad about it, and you're trying to like discover it. This has never happened to me before when I wasn't using Trend, never happened after. 
only happened with it. This is like completely true. There are many other things, weird things that Trend do. Honestly, it would require a video to really get into all of the weird experiences. But the point is, Trend would make me unconfident, neurotic, doubting people, doubting myself. And then at the same time, very aggressive, very determined, somehow resilient despite having low self-esteem. So you're getting hurt a lot, but you're very resilient. So you're imagining all of these kind of slights in your world around you but your body is not giving up. You're this alpha male that has everything going against them. So, and also sometimes it also causes like an apathy, like having low estrogen levels. So the combination of all these things at once, really the worst. When I was very young, I, in my early 20s and I tried it, I barely noticed it. I used to think that people who complained about this were exaggerating, that it wasn't really true, and so on. I barely noticed it. Later, I noticed it, but I thought I could tolerate it. But after all this time, especially not using these things for years, I noticed that in the time periods that I was taking Tren, in fact, once I think I went to jail partially because I was on Tren, to be honest with you, which I should tell that story someday. But Tren caused, I believe taking Tren was the main reason I have broken up before, also been to jail at least once, and to be honest with you, almost developed a worse case of anxiety than I already had. But I didn't notice all this at the time. Years later, looking back, I can see the associations. Anyway, friends, I hope this was helpful and somewhat interesting. If you'd like me to make a similar discussion for insulin and growth hormone, I could as well. And if you'd like me to theorize on what I think the mechanisms at play are, or if you have any other questions, let me know below. I'll see you again tomorrow morning.